Giallo is the Italian mystery horror genre that was most prominent from 1970 to 1975. It takes its name from the term for the mystery novels being published in Italy around the same time. Those novels had yellow covers. Giallo is Italian for yellow. The films eventually gained a reputation of gratuitous violence and their murder scenes serve as a big influence on the American slasher film. General Viaggio Celebrity presents Top 10 Italian Giallo Films Number 10 A Blade in the Dark 1983 A music composer hires a country house to write the soundtrack for a horror B-movie. There he discovers something about a mysterious girl called Linda and suddenly people around him begin to be killed. Maybe the solution is in the final scene of the movie he is working on. There were no sets built for the film. It was all shot on location at one large Italian villa. In fact, the movie itself was written to be shot around that particular location. Director Lamberto Bava said in an interview that he liked the American title for the film much better than the Italian title. Bava felt that particular title captured the film much better. Number 9 your Vice is a lock room and only I have the key, 1972. A series of murders are committed near the estate of a degenerate author and his wife. Oliviero is a burnout writer living at his estate near Verona, his dead mother dominating his imagination. He is also a degenerate, sleep with his maid and his ex-student, host Bacchanalia for local hippies and humiliate his wife Irina in front of strangers. She lives in terror. When a young woman is murdered, police suspect Oliviero. Things get complicated when his young, beautiful and self-confident niece Florina pays an unexpected visit. A silver-haired stranger observes. More women die and thoughts of harming Irina give Oliviero new inspiration. Watch Florina's game and woos the observant stranger. Watching all is a black cat named Satan. The title is reference to Sergio Martino's earlier Chalo, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, 1971, in which the same phrase appears in a mysterious note apparently sent by a killer. Number 8. A Lizard in a Woman's Skin in London, Carol Hammond lives in a fancy building with her husband Frank Hammond and her stepdaughter John. Carol is the beloved daughter of the wealthy and prominent lawyer and politician Edmund and Frank is his partner in his office and has a love affair with Deborah. Carol's next door neighbor Julia is a depraved woman that promotes party with drugs. Carol has psychoanalysis with Dr. Kerr and is intrigued with a nightmare, where she stabbed Julia to death three times with a couple watching the murder. When Julia is found dead in her apartment, the efficient inspector Corwin and his partner Sergeant Brandon are assigned to investigate. All the evidence point out to Carol but was a dream or reality. Despite being credited in advertising, Anita Strindberg doesn't receive an on-screen credit in the film itself. Number 7. Strip Nude for Your Killer 1975 When a fashion model dies during an abortion, a series of murders begins, starting with her doctor. The next victims are connected to the modeling agency where she works, Albert Ross, run by a hard-aged and jealous Zizella, married to a Farrokh, like dissolute. One suspect is Carlo, a playboy photographer who has a hot temper and refused to share information with the police. He becomes the lover of Magda, another photographer at the agency, who is probably in danger. The murderer wears a black motorcycle outfit and helmet. Will anyone discover the murderer's identity before the interagency dies? The theme song is a sound-alike song resembling closely the song Papa was a Rolling Stone by The Temptation. Number 6. Black Belly of the Tarantula, 1971 When nymphomaniac Maria Zani is murdered, her ex-husband and insurance broker Paolo Zani becomes the prime suspect of Inspector Tellini. Then the saleswoman Marta is murdered in the same modus so operandi. Both victims had been paralyzed by acupuncture needles with poison introduced in their necks. 
and their bellies had been ripped open with a knife with the victim still alive. In the same way that tarantulas are killed by tarantula hawks, the police find that she was also a drug dealer. Paolo meets Inspector Tellini to tell him that he is innocent. Further, he hires the private eyes La Catapulta that finds the last man that had met Maria, the photographer Mario. Paolo pursues Mario but they both die and Inspector Tellini finds an enveloped address to Franca Valentino with Mario. Number 5. The Strange Voice of Mrs. Ward, 1971. Mrs. Julie Ward returned to Vienna with her husband Neil, who is an investor in Wall Street. Julie and Neil have been married for one year but they do not love each other. Julie has a trauma from her former boyfriend Jean, who was a sadistic man. While Neil has meeting in Austria, Julie spent the vacation with her friend Carol. They go to a party where Carol introduces her handsome cousin George, who has just inherited a fortune with her. When Julie sees Jean in the party, she decides to leave the place. Soon Julie, who is neglected by Neil, has a love affair with George. Meanwhile, a serial killer that kills women with a razor blade is terrifying Vienna and the inspector has no lead to follow. When Julie is blackmailed because of her love affair with George, she suspects she might be the blackmailer. Number 4. Don't Torture Duckling, 1972 In the backward village of Asendra, the boy Bruno goes missing and the police inspector and the local commissioner and the village captain modestly investigate the case. When his father received the request of a ransom, the police arrest the local Giuseppe and realize that he is innocent. Then the boys Michael and Tonino are also murdered and the police suspect of the local witch Marciara, who practices black magic, might be the killer but they find she is also innocent. However, the superstitious and ignorant locals brutally kill her. Meanwhile, that village is crowded of journalists, including the experienced Andrea from Rome. He befriends Patrizzi, a daughter of a wealthy entrepreneur that is living in the village after a drug scandal. Number 3. Deep Red 1975 During a special conference on the paranormal, a renowned psyche gets a strange message that a killer is in the audience and is rushed back to her apartment where she is brutally killed by unknown assailant. A witness turned out to be a pianist team up with a local reporter to investigate the psychic's death. After interviewing her business partner, they hit a small snag and go their separate ways. After both have hit dead ends with their respective investigation, they put aside their differences and decide to try to solve it together. Following a loose assortment of clues that seem to have no connection to each other, they discover that the killer has been targeting him. As they continue to investigate, a friend makes an important contribution. Armed with this new clue, they start putting the clues together and race to stop the killer before he strikes again. Number 2. Bay of Blood, 1971 An elderly heiress is killed by her husband who wants control of her fortunes. What ensues is an all-out murder spree as relatives and friends attempt to reduce the inheritance playing field. Complicated by some teenagers who decide to camp out in a dilapidated building on the estate. Due to the film's low budget, most of the location in the film belong to director Mario Bava or member of the crew. The interiors of Countess Federica's home was shot at a favorite villa of Bava's and the interiors of Frank Ventura's country house were shot at a summer home owned by the producer. Dario Argento loved the film so much he had a friend who was a projectionist steal him a print of the film during its first run in Italy. The theater ended up sewing hatchet for the honeymoon 1970 to replace the stolen print for the remainder of the film's run there. About a week and a half according to Argento, he possesses the print to this day. Number 1. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage 1970 Sam, an American writer in Rome, witnesses a murder attempt on the wife of the owner of an art gallery by a sinister man in a raincoat and a black leather gloves, but Sam is powerless to do anything as he gets trapped between a double set of glass doors in going to her aid. 
The woman's survives and the police say that she is the first surviving victim of a notorious serial killer. But when they fail to make any progress with the case, Sam decides to investigate on his own, turning up several clues that point in the direction of just one possible suspect, assuming that he really knows who he's looking for. Tony Musante was a very intense actor and is alleged he would frequently show up at Dario Argento's apartment at 3 am to discuss characterization, much to Argento's annoyance.